Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with my uh, my trusty VFR. What we're going to be doing in this video is we are going to be removing the clutch slave cylinder and we are going to be carrying out a little rebuild. Um, so uh, yeah, first thing we need to do is obviously get it off the bike, um, but before we do that I need to drain the, uh, the fluid from both the reservoir and the line um, and then we can uh, we can safely remove the slave cylinder without dripping fluid all over the floor. So that's where we'll begin this video. Right then, where we're going to begin is uh, with the JAS screwdriver, we're going to remove the two screws on top of the clutch reservoir. Don't be tempted to use a Phillips because all you'll do is you'll just chew the head up and uh, it will cause you problems later on. Take the two screws out, pop them down there. Pop the screwdriver in my pocket. Right, as you can see, obviously I've got a bit of workshop towel around the reservoir and then the screws can go in there and then take both the plastic filler and the seal and then pop them down like so. Now, if we look at this, um, it's not particularly clean. It has been about two years since I last changed the fluid, so it was due a change anyhow, hence the reason why I'm doing this job now. Uh, there's no point in going to the effort of bleeding all the fluid out, putting fresh fluid in, and then having to, you know, take it all out again because we're going to uh, rebuild the, uh, the slave cylinder. So, this is the kind of job that you would do at the time when you're, uh, when you're going to replace the fluid anyway. So up here, what we're going to do? I've got a, uh, I've got a syringe. These are, uh, you know, you can get these all over the place. Um, but all I'm going to do is suck fluid out from there, and then put it into my dirty brake fluid jar. Doing it this way means there's less to suck out through the bleed nipple. Just a bit, a bit easier in my opinion. Obviously, I'm using my hand to catch any drips because we don't want it falling onto any bodywork. Okay, so now we've got that out, what we can do is obviously clean up the fingers. But in here we can see there's quite a bit of grime and grot, so we'll give it a good clean out. Um, making sure any, you know, sludge or anything like that is recovered. You may find that this little piece here comes out. If it does, don't worry about it. It just pops back in, um, but we'll do that in a moment. Give it a good clean. Okay, right. So that isn't as clean as I'd like it to be, but I'll come back to that later on before we uh, before we top up anything. What I need to do now is just I need to drain all the fluid out of the line and we'll do that at the bleed nipple. Right then, now we've emptied the, uh, the fluid from the reservoir, what we need to do is just drain out what's in the line and the uh, and the slave cylinder itself. And we do that down here at this, at this little uh, bleed nipple. We need a 10 mil spanner on there. What we can do is we can actually move that pipe out of the way a little bit. Okay, and what we're gonna do to do this is I'm gonna use the trusty vacuum pump, which we've all seen me use before on numerous occasions. Okay. Pop it all together. 
like so. And there we are, right, we can now pop that on there and crack off the bleed metal. Build of pressure, and as you can see, all the lovely old fluid is flowing out. There won't be a massive amount, we can hear it suck in at the reservoir, so another little couple of pumps. Yeah, I can hear it sucking in at the reservoir. So now we can close that off, pop the hose off, and there we are. That is the system completely bled of fluid. So now what we can do is we can, uh, you know, we can um, disconnect everything without risk of uh, fluid, you know, going, uh, going everywhere. So next step, let's get on with it. Right then. Now that the uh, the system is completely empty, we can uh, we can start disconnecting stuff without um, you know spilling fluid everywhere. Um, however, what I have done is I've just popped a little bit of workshop tissue on at the floor just to catch anything residual because there may well be um, you know the odd drop. So what we need to do is we need to get this clutch slave cylinder off. It's held on with three eight mil bolts and obviously the banjo needs to be disconnected. Now to get the banjo off, um, it's a 12 mil spanner. Now, if we try and use the open-ended um, uh, end of the spanner, we'll probably just round the bolt off, so I'd rather use the ring end. And to get on to the, to, to get the ring on, um, the, uh, the speed sensor is in the way. So to get that off, again, just two eight mil bolts. Just pull them out. And then the speed sensor can be, you know, just pulled out of the way and tucked up like so. Um, obviously, when we when it comes to putting it back in, we just make make sure that this is aligned with the um, with the bolt for the uh, for the front sprocket, and you know we won't go wrong. Okay, so now we're uh, now we've got that out of the way. We can, as you can see, get the get the ring end on, and if we crack it off just like so see there is a little bit of a little bit of fluid left in hence the reason why we've uh, got our tissue down here and now we can take the banjo out along with the two washers and there we are Okay, let me tuck that back in there. There we go, that's it. Right, let me just uh, have a little bit of a clean up. We recover the banjo and the two washers. And there's the two little bolts for the speed sensor. Again, we'll pop them to one side. Right, now what I'm gonna do, just give this area a little wipe. And there we are. Right, now what we can do next is remove the three bolts holding the uh, the slave cylinder onto this cover. Right, so three bolts holding the slave cylinder on. Now behind the behind the slave cylinder there is a gasket of which I have a new one so we'll be replacing that when we come to refit. You'll notice that they are all different lengths, so they need to go back into the right place. That one obviously needs a bit of a clean up. Okay, so there we are, that's the three bolts. Now we can set about removing the slave cylinder from the sprocket cover. Right, now this is gonna be stuck to the uh, sprocket cover quite well despite the fact that the bolts are removed so what we're going to do is we're going to use a screwdriver to remove it and I'm going to protect the sprocket cover with a bit of tissue and then a lever off the slave cylinder there we go and it went with a bit of a pop and now 
we can pop it off the bike just like so so now here is the push rod um, and here is the gasket that I mentioned a moment ago so we'll have to clean all of that off um, and it, you can notice just on the end of the push rod it's got a bit of grease on it so we need to replace the grease um, when we uh, when we reassemble um, I'll give all of this a good clean up um, but yeah that is the clutch push rod which obviously goes all the way through and activates the uh, the pressure plate on the other side um, on, the, on the obviously on the clutch basket so here we are with the clutch slave cylinder anyway and yeah what we need to do now is take this over to the bench pull it apart carry out a rebuild and then reassemble okay so now we've got the uh, the clutch slave cylinder over on the bench what we can do is we can remove the piston um, it should move fairly freely and just pop out like so behind it you'll find the spring which is jammed on there we go pop, pop that off here we have the oil seal or the fluid seal for the brake fluid and then there's another seal just here um, all of which are going to be replaced so what we need to do is just pop the seals off noting the way round it goes you can see that the skirt is angled just make sure it goes back on the same way well the new one goes on the same way and then here we have this one this one's a bit of a swine to get out she comes just like so and then what we need to do now is just give all of this a really good clean uh, as you can see inside the slave cylinder there's a lot of silt we need to clean all that off we also need to clean the gasket face uh, so that it sits correctly um, and then what I'm going to do I'm going to take the um, bleed nipple off I'm wondering if I do actually have a, uh, another bleed nipple. I've got a feeling I do um, and if I do then what I'll do I'll replace this one as well um, if I can't clean it up. But yeah so what I'll do I'll get all of this clean and then I'll bring you back and we'll uh, we'll start looking at the rebuild process. Okay so I've had a bit of a, a bit of a cleaning spree and what I can tell you is everything uh, everything's now nice. What I also did was I took the sprocket cover off um, it, I mean, it's, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. This was absolutely thick with uh, chain lube, so I've given it a bit of a clean out, and it was also a lot easier to get the gasket, um, the old gasket off, uh, with, you know, with it off the bike. So that part here, uh, get it the right way around, simply mounts on there like so. And the actual cover itself is only held on with two bolts. Once you've taken the um, the slave cylinder off, it's a bolt there and a bolt there, and then that just pulls off. Um, and yeah, so I'll give them that a, a good clean and we'll put that back on very shortly. Here is the new gasket um, to go on it. This is a genuine Honda one. There is the part number should you should you need it. Um, there you go. I'll leave uh, a link in the description to, uh, you know, to these parts so you can go and find them yourself. Uh, but we'll pop that on um, when it comes to reassembly. Okay, so what we'll do now is um, we will reassemble the the uh, the slave cylinder itself and i have a little rebuild kit here now this is not a genuine honda rebuild kit because the the cost for a genuine honda one was actually astronomical but the quality seems to be very very good new spring new piston seal new inner seal and then a little cap to go on the uh to go on the bleed nipple now i did say i was going to replace the bleed nipple however when i went and looked all the ones that i've got that are spares uh, are different um sizes to this so i don't have a spare one however it actually did clean up quite nicely so i'm happy to reuse that one right then let's uh let's get it all slung back together okay so we have new seal and as i said before we need to make sure that the skirt of it goes on the right way round 
um, so it goes on like that way. What I'm going to do is just going to give it a little light coat of red rubber grease all the way around because this will aid in fitting a little bit on the inside and then we can simply pop it over the top of the piston I'm gonna give it a little bit more lube and there we go that is the first part done next is the inner seal for the push rod and that will just push in there just like so and we'll just basically fit it until it's flush with the upper surface and that is that part done next we take our brand new spring and pop that onto the uh, onto the back of the piston and now we're ready to uh, assemble that back into the uh, into the housing right then okay so the uh, the slave cylinder, giving it a good clean out, got all the old gasket off, and we're now ready to uh, fit the piston back in. I'm going to just get a little bit more red rubber grease. Can't really overdo it with this stuff. It'll just aid in fitment, and then simply pop her into the housing, making sure that the skirt of the seal goes in correctly. And there we go and give it a little push up and down and that'll just make sure that the seal has reasserted itself correctly which I believe it has what I'm going to do now just pop plenty of red rubber grease into the middle of the seal just like so and that's when the uh, the push rod will enter and yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be all lubed up and nice. Okay, so in again in the kit we had another one of these little caps. Oops, put it on the right way. Just like so, and we can pop that in as well. Ten mil spanner, just nip it up and there we go that is the slave cylinder rebuilt ready to be fitted so what we need to do is we need to refit the sprocket cover back onto the bike with its two bolts and with the gasket fit the slave cylinder back onto the sprocket cover so let's go over to the bike okay so first thing i'm going to do is refit the uh refit the sprocket cover now the push rod here goes through this hole here so we'll make sure that we get it correctly aligned like so get it up to the bike make sure it's all seated correctly and then we can refit the two bolts that hold the sprocket cover on these are only small bolts, so they're only about 10 newton meters, so don't lean on them. There we go. And that is the sprocket cover reinstalled. Really, really is that easy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave the speed sensor tucked out of the way for the moment, so it's not getting in our way. And next, what we'll do is we will get the clutch slave cylinder with its gasket fitted to the sprocket cover. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, on the end of the clutch push rod, a little bit of grease, just pop that on there. And there we go. Right, next what we need is the gasket out of the packet. Uh, that would help if my knife was working properly. There we go, there. There is the new gasket, just like so. And what we need to do is just pop it over the dowels, just like so. 
and there we are let me pop that brake line out of the way so it's not in our way and then the slave cylinder itself what we need to do is just align it over the push rod and push it home into place now the two longer bolts go top and bottom because these go straight through this casing and into the into the block and then the smaller one at the side here because this one actually screws into this cover then get them up to touch okay and then again these will be around the 10 newton meter mark so don't lean on them they don't need to be overly tight and there we go right next what we need to do now is we need to refit the hose but what we do need is two new um washers uh, it would have been nice if they'd have included them in the rebuild kit seeing as you have to take this off in order to be able to rebuild it it's a bit odd that they didn't include that however i i have plenty of spares so i'll go and grab a couple and we'll get that fitted back on okay so here we are a couple of brand new copper washers fit them onto the banjo and then we can tighten the banjo bolt back up to the slave cylinder just nip it up and then and then just tighten them down to com slightly compress the copper washers there we go right now we've got the speed sensor to refit which come on get out of there there we are right now what we need to do is make sure that this goes back onto the bolt on the um on the sprocket uh, so it's got to be correctly aligned otherwise we won't get it back there we go just make sure it's it's a good little twist until it aligns itself and then refit the two screws and give them a little tighten and there we are that is that job done all that remains is obviously to bleed the system up um, I'm not going to do that on, on video because it will double the length of the video unnecessarily because I've already done it so what I'll do I'll leave that uh, video link at the top right now um, and for those who are watching on a device that won't display uh, cue cards I'll leave the link to that video in the description as well Anyway, it was, it's a pretty straightforward process. It's, there's nothing too, um, you know, too taxing in this. It's pretty, pretty easy. Um, taking the sprocket cover off was worthwhile because there was a heck of a lot of built up, um, you know, crud and uh, chain lube behind there. And obviously when the chain lube's in there, it, gather, it attracts dirt and it just sits there. Um, so, you know, it's worthwhile taking it all off and, uh, and giving it a good clean. Anyway, um, the rebuild kit and all the stuff that I've used in this video i'll leave links to those uh, in the description as well so you can go and check all of that out hopefully guys you enjoyed this video uh, if you did then obviously whack that thumbs up button and i will see you all again for the very next video thank you very much bye bye now